Hi everyone, welcome to another video of our prayer series. We're getting really close to the end now, which is exciting, but it's also a shame because I think we've learned so many great things about prayer and it's such an interesting topic. And I know me and Cassie have definitely enjoyed looking into it and teaching you about it. Um, so today we're going to be looking a bit more about how to pray. And we're going to be looking at the book of Job, which is probably one you haven't come across that much before. Um, it's quite a sad book. Job goes through quite a lot of suffering and frustration, but there is definitely things we can learn from him about prayer, and we'll look at that a bit later. But firstly, we had we have another interview video, and this time it's with Laurie and Margaret, which I'm sure lots of you know, they're from the Iceford congregation, um, and they're such a lovely couple. We, we love talking to them, we love seeing them, such lovely people, so we're really excited to have them on our video today. Um, sharing with us about their experience of prayer. So I'll show you that video now. Okay, so hi again, everyone. I'm here with Laurie and Margaret, who you might recognize um, as they're from Iford this time, rather than Morelands College. Um, and they're going to be talking to us a bit about their experience of prayer, which is really exciting because we've heard um, some students' perspectives, but we haven't heard from anyone from our congregation. Um, so my first question for you both is, do you have a time when you like to pray? Yes. Yes, we, we, we do. Um, it, cha it changes, attending really what age you are, and your and your circumstances. I mean, one time I used to pray at night, and then sometimes during, at one time in lunchtime. But it just depends what you're doing in the daytime. I expect as young people, if you pray, you would pray probably in the evening when you go to bed or something. But what we do now is we pray in the morning when we're having our coffee during the mm -hmm. middle of the morning. Hmm. We have what we what's called family prayers. There's only us now, but we pray together. We have our coffee at our past ten, and we pray uh, for a while. And also, I usually get up quite early in the morning, and then I spend some time quiet and reading reading the Bible and, and praying. Then, and but you can pray any time. I mean, we we pray. We pray sometimes sitting on the bus. <laughs> we pray sometimes walking up the road. But it's nice to have a special place where you can come uh, to pray, even if it's only for a, a short time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and the next question is, I was going to ask, where do you like to pray? But you've already said that it's in lots of different places. Um, I imagine mostly in your home, kind of if it's over coffee in the morning. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I'll kind of move on to ask, um, how do you pray? Do you have like a structure that you follow? Um, or is it just more of a anything that comes into your head? No, we don't have a structure. It's, we ask the Lord who we should be praying for that day, apart from praying for our family and always, always thanking God for our home, our food, our family always always and for our health mm -hmm. but we but we also ask the lord who we should pray for that day and sometimes it's somebody who's not well or something like that mm. I, I would so that some people you you might be know them but some people find it helpful they have a little book and they read prayers from books and that's what they like to do but we're not we're not used to that we uh, we pray. We don't have any structure. We just come and, as M Margaret said, we pray out. We feel it's right for that day. Mm. But it does vary. Some people will find it perhaps helpful to read little prayers from a book. That's okay, as long as you mean them. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And then, um, can you think of a time when you've seen a really clear answer to prayer? Well, we, we, I can, yeah, we kept over. No, if Margaret wasn't there, there is one. I'm going to try and be very quickly. It's about a cat. And the cat was named Timmy. 
and we used to have this lovely cat when our children were small and we all loved Timmy. She was a big ginger cat and we used to live near London and then we were going to move down here to this area near Bournemouth. So we, I came down one day in the removal van. Uh, no, I came in the car and then two days later, Margaret was bringing our little children in the removal van. With a new baby. With a new baby as mm, well. And a two, brand new baby. And a two baby children. Boy. Yeah. But I came in the car and I brought Timmy with me because I thought it'd be better to bring him down. But what they do sometimes, you might not know that, but sometimes cats get very frightened and, and upset. Mm. So we got from the vet a tablet that you gave her to make her a bit sleepy so she wouldn't be too frightened. Well, anyway, I got to Dorset and I got to our house, which was empty at the time, but she was going to live in. And I, I got there and I got the things out and I got the cat out and she came into her new house and she looked around and I was busy doing all sorts of things. And a little while later, I couldn't find Timmy the cat. And I was so worried because I thought, oh no, we, we've only just got here. I hope she hasn't got out the door or we've lost her. I looked everywhere. I called her and I was really, really so upset because I knew how upset my children would be when they arrived in their new house and there was no sign of their mm. lovely cat. Mm. So I was so desperate and I couldn't spend too much time looking. I remember I got down on my knees and I prayed to God and I cried out to God. I said, God, please find Timmy. Let me know where she is. I haven't got time to be chasing around like this. And do you know what happened at that moment? Timmy, she, she came out from under the stairs. She, I didn't know she was there. She'd got, found a cupboard and she'd gone in the cupboard and she was been asleep. Now she came out of the cupboard, she looked at me and I, could, oh, I you can imagine I was so pleased. Then she just looked at me, she went back in the cupboard again and fell asleep again. <laughs> and do you know, do you know what happened? Boys and girls, I'd given her too, I'd given her too much tablet and I've made her too sleepy <laughs> and she couldn't wake up. But you see, God knew how worried I was. I was so worried about this cat. She just walked as if God told her. She brought out, looked at me and went back to sleep and slept for a long time. But at least I knew she was all right. But that was a wonderful answer to prayer for me because mm. I didn't know how I was going to tell my mm. family I'd lost her already. And we'd only just moved. Now that was to me, I always remember that a long time ago, but it was a wonderful thing. Mm. Mm. That's a that's yeah. a great story. I love that. Thank you so much, both of you. That's been really helpful. Um, we've really enjoyed hearing what you have to say about prayer. Mm -hmm. So there we go. That was Laurie and Margaret talking about their experience of prayer. Um, and it's really nice to hear a different perspective of an older couple um, compared to some all of the students that we've been speaking to. Um, so now we're going to move on to actually reading a little bit from the book of Job and Cassie's going to read that for us. I'll share it on the screen so that you can follow along if you'd like to. I've just got to find it. There we go. So this reading is from Job, chapter 42, verses 1 to 6. Then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of you can be thwarted. You asked, who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. He said, listen now and I will speak. I will question you and you shall answer me. My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. Thank you, Cassie. So that was the Bible passage from Job. And I'm just going to start by kind of talking about um, Job's journey all the way through the book and how his kind of prayer and his interaction with God looks like at that point. And then we'll look in a bit more detail at this specific bit that Cassie just read. So Job is, is a very faithful servant of God. And near the beginning of the book, um, a lot of his 
kind of blessings and everything that he has, which is good in his life, is taken away from him. Um, his, his belongings, his family, um, most of his friends, except for just three of them. Um, and so he really ends up feeling like he has nothing left and he can't understand why God would do that to him um, when he doesn't feel that he's done anything wrong or anything to deserve it. And so throughout the book, we see a lot of frustration and a lot of kind, almost a bit like anger on Job's part, um, where he kind of asks lots of questions and he's not, we don't know that he's directing them specifically to God, um, but he's not specifically addressing everyone else in, in some of them. So there's a good chance that some of the time he is just there with his thoughts, speaking them to God and getting really frustrated. You know, he's asking, why have you done this to me? Why, why was I born? Why have I lived this life just to go through all of this suffering now? And so he asks lots of really, really hard questions. And throughout them, there's a lot of raw emotions of Job just not being able to understand why God has done this to him. And I think there are so many times when our prayer can be like that, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's a difference between being frustrated and asking God why, and actually blaming God for everything and hating God for what we're going through. And so we shouldn't be speaking to God in a way which is disrespectful to him as, as our king. Um, but there, is, there isn't a reason why if, if we are suffering or if we're finding something really hard, or if we don't understand why some of the things that are going on around us are happening, we can ask God why and express to him how we're feeling because he cares about us and he wants to know how we're feeling. He wants to know our thoughts and our emotions. So we see that earlier on in the book of Job, and I'm sure there will be times in everyone's life when they say prayers very much like what Job is saying, just asking God why. Um, but then at this point in the story, Job has finally had an answer from God and he's taken a bit of a step back um, and he's ended up saying, I'm going to read it again. He's ended up saying, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. You ask, who is, who is, that obscure, who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. You said, listen now and I will speak. I will question you and you shall answer me. My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in, da in dust and ashes. So Job has finally recognized um, that God is still with him and does still love him despite everything that he's gone through in his life. And I think the main thing he's learned here, which we see near the end, is that God wants him to listen God wants Job to listen to what God has to say. And throughout this book, we have Job and his friends talking constantly and not leaving any space to hear what God has to say. Um, and so the instructions we can take from this passage in the Bible is that we need to be trying when we pray, not just to be talking all the time and always thinking that we need to fill the silence, but actually taking quite a lot of the time just to step back and listen to God and try and hear what he wants to say to us because he's told Job here um, that he is going to speak. He has also said that he is going to question Job and Job will answer him, uh, which is interesting as well. Like Job spent this whole book questioning God, going, God, what are you doing? Why is all of this happening to me? And then at this point, God is saying, well, actually, I'm going to ask you some questions now. And so it shows us that this relationship with God goes both ways. And so we do really need to stop and listen to him. It's such an important part of prayer. Um, and that's all that I'm going to say about that passage today. Just a very simple instruction for you. Um, of course, tell God your feelings. Tell him your emotions. Be honest with him. Be open with him. He wants to know and he does care. But also take the time to stop and listen before you say things which you'll regret because you haven't heard what God wants to say to you. And now to finish off this session, I'm gonna pass over to Cassie to pray for us. Okay. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for what we can learn from Job and 
we pray that you will give us ears that really can listen to you make us attentive so that we can be still and really hear what you have to say to us we thank you that you are always there and you are listening and we can turn to you with everything that's going on in our lives even when we're really just stressed and really upset and we just have these raw emotions like Job, we can turn to you and tell you all about them but sometimes we also just need to be still and listen to you so i just pray that you will give us ears that will listen and yeah, that you will teach us to be still and listen for what you have to say to us and we also ask you that you will bless us all this week bless our church bless all the anchors children and yeah we just pray that we will grow in our prayer life and in our relationships with you in jesus name amen amen thank you cassie and so that's everything for our video today and next week is going to be our final video of our prayer series um so next week is going to be a little bit different rather than looking at a passage and talking about what it tells us about prayer in the same way as we have this week we're actually just going to be looking at a series of difficult questions about prayer or just interesting questions about prayer and we'll just take turns to answer them as best we can so we'd love to see you for that um it would be really great to clear up any questions that people might have if you do have any questions that you would like to ask us yourselves for us to answer in our session then do get your parents to email us with your questions so that we can answer them um, but if not we're going to prepare some of our own ones as well and we look forward to doing that with you next week so bye for now have a great week and god bless you bye, bye.